The rebellion of Spartacus was not only the most significant, but also the last of the slave rebellions in Rome. This war, which turned Spartacus into a symbol of freedom throughout history, would forever mark Rome. The two previous slave wars had focused on Sicily, one of the areas with the highest number of slaves in the Republic. But it was not the only one. Across Magna Graecia, thousands of slaves worked on agricultural estates. Those with military experience were typically sent to gladiator schools to fight in the arena, and one of the largest gladiator schools was located in Capua, where Spartacus was sent. The owner of the school, Lentulus Batiatus, was known for being a particularly cruel master, leading to around 70 gladiators taking up arms and fighting to escape. The group of rebels, equipped with weapons and gladiator armor, took up a defensive position on the outskirts of Capua while Batiatus had sent a small force to try and capture them. It was here where they decided that Spartacus and two Gauls named Crixon and Yeno Mao would be the leaders. Under their command, the small group of rebels easily defeated Batiatus' forces and proceeded to raid the fields outside Capua to capture more slaves for their cause. They managed to gather a few thousand men, gave them weapons they had captured from the defeated Romans and retreated to a high position on Mount Vesuvius. Due to the proximity of the revolt to Rome itself, the Senate sent Gaius Claudius Glaber with around 3,000 militia to try and quell a revolt that was not yet perceived as a real threat. However, these inexperienced militia were no match for the gladiators thirsty for freedom, and thus Glaber's forces were destroyed. After their first significant victory against the Romans, Spartacus' forces multiplied, and Rome soon sent another force, this time a complete legion under the command of the praetor Publius Verinius. However, for some reason, Verinius chose to divide his force between two legates, Furio and Cosinio. Furio's force of around 2,000 men was forced to engage in battle and was quickly defeated, while Cosinio was ambushed near a river. After these successes, the number of Spartacus' army increased to almost 70,000 and the captured Roman camps provided even more equipment for their growing army. Alarmed by Spartacus' success and his proximity to Rome, the Senate sent their two consuls, Lucius Publicola and Nius Lentulus, each with armies of 20,000 men. The fact that both consuls were sent against Spartacus shows how fearful the Senate was of this rebellion. It should be remembered that during the height of the previous civil wars, only one consul had been sent. At this point, there seemed to be some division between Crixus and Spartacus, and the rebel forces split. About 30,000 remained with Crixus in the south, while the remaining 60,000 men followed Spartacus north. This division would be the first major setback for the rebels, as Publicola was able to trap Crixus and his forces, forcing them to battle near Mount Gargano. Crixus and his followers were crushed by the Roman consular army, and after their victory, Publicola immediately marched north to face Spartacus. For his part, Spartacus knew that being caught between two armies would be a disaster, so he tried to face Claudius first, and then Publicola. Claudius could have waited for Publicola to join forces, but he apparently underestimated Spartacus and decided to face him directly, being crushed by the Thracian. Then, Spartacus headed south to face Publicola and defeated him as well, causing both consuls to flee back to Rome to regroup. Spartacus' victory over two consuls attracted even more slaves to his banner, estimated to have given him about 120,000 men, including freedmen. Three years had already passed since the war began, and the elections in Rome to choose a praetor had few candidates for fear of facing Spartacus. However, Marcus Licinius Crassus took advantage of this opportunity. Crassus, who was the richest man in Rome, offered his own fortune to help the war against Spartacus. As a result, he was given complete command of the war and assigned six new legions, in addition to Publicola and Claudius' men, who were around 50,000 auxiliaries. Crassus then sent two legions under the command of one of his legates, Mummius, to monitor Spartacus with strict orders not to engage in battle. However, Mummius, perhaps seeking to gain glory and fame, disobeyed these orders and attacked Spartacus from behind. The Thracian easily defeated Momio's legions, who were forced to retreat with Crassus. After this, 
Crassus mobilized his entire force to confront Spartacus, who despite his successes, was very nervous about facing Crassus's eight legions. Spartacus decided to retreat to Lucania in southern Italy. Once there, he tried to negotiate passage to Sicily with some pirates, hoping to leave part of his army there to provoke another rebellion and return to Italy strengthened. However, despite accepting payment, the pirates betrayed Spartacus and abandoned him. This gave Crassus time to catch up to Spartacus near Regio and start building a 50-kilometer-long stockade and ditch, leaving Spartacus trapped and without provisions. At this point, breaking through the fortified legions was impossible. Nevertheless, Spartacus managed to escape with 50,000 men thanks to a snowstorm that impaired visibility during one night. This allowed Spartacus to head towards Vindarna, and when the Senate in Rome found out, they decided to send Pompey the Great South to help Crassus. After easily defeating the rebels who could not flee, Crassus headed towards Spartacus, following his army to surrender. But just as Spartacus was about to reach Brindisi, they heard that Lucullus had arrived in the area with reinforcements from Macedonia. At this point, Spartacus panicked and tried to reach a truce agreement with Crassus, but any proposal was rejected. In a desperate attempt, Spartacus tried to flee north away from Crassus and Lucullus, but while on the way, he learned that Pompey the Great was coming from the north. At this point, Spartacus and his men, who had no intention of returning to slavery, found themselves surrounded by three massive armies. Realizing that there was nowhere to run, Spartacus marched south to face Crassus. On the other hand, Crassus, who did not want Pompey and his troops to claim his glory, decided to battle Spartacus near the Salarius River. Both forces were similar in size, with about 50,000 men for Spartacus and 40,000 for Crassus. When the battle began, Spartacus' forces charged against the Roman lines. The battle was long and bloody, with both sides unable to overcome the other. However, Spartacus, seeing that Crassus was on horseback behind the first lines, tried to reach him even knocking down two centurions who caused him several wounds. Nevertheless, Spartacus was surrounded by Crassus' personal guard and lost his life. Upon hearing of his death, the rest of the rebel army broke down completely, and while the initial fight had been brutal, the battlefield was now open for the Romans. About 36,000 rebels lost their lives, while about 6,000 were captured and crucified along the Appian Way from Rome to Capua. The remaining 5,000 were captured by Pompey's forces coming from the north, delivering the final blow and ending the Third Servile War. Rome would never again see a slave revolt of this scale, and Spartacus would go down in history as the greatest threat to Rome since Hannibal. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like to let me know. And if you're not subscribed, I recommend that you do so since I'll be posting more content like this. Thanks to all the members who support this channel and allow me to keep going. See you in the next video.